Hi. Yeah, can I just ask which ad you're looking at? Okay, and have you seen a sex worker before? You have. I massage you top to toe, front to back, every muscle included. I can, um, I can wear all sorts of lingerie. I have a nice collection here. Very pale, creamy, smooth skin. But I do like to pamper you all over. Yep, and I'm blonde, so I'm about five foot four. 10.30 is perfect. What a nice way to start the day. I've been a sex worker now for over 14 years. Funny enough, I'm one of those sex workers that was always drawn to it, so I always used to look at the ads when I was younger. <laughs> Generally, when I meet people, I say, well, I'm a sex worker. I just think, you know, life's too short. All pre-loved by hard-working sex workers, so they've all got a story. <laughs> I've worked in everything from massage parlours, full-service brothels, a bit of B&Z, stripping. I've worked for madams, I've worked for escort agencies. Now, I work for myself. And that one, I earned lots of money in. <laughs> what is it? Is it a top? It's, it's actually a top. Yeah, it's, I bought it in New York. Oh, I'm going to buy that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, just because it's something that... Yeah, if I don't buy it, I know that I'll regret it later. New South Wales is one of only two places in the world that has a decriminalised sex industry. So in principle, we can operate like any other business. Well, this is the best stall. There we go. It's the International Whores Day is on the 2nd of June, so we'll be marching down there. Come down and see us. Yeah. How are you? My Thank pleasure. You. Have a lovely day. So if you want to come along... Well, and... Horse Day? Yes, actually. Okay. You'd be surprised where we are. They actually so, do that. Yes. In our world today. You've got that, and I've got this. Sexual empowerment kind of drives me, I guess you could say. And that is because I think everyone has a right to sexual expression. And that includes people with disability. There is this social misconception that people with disability are nice and quiet and quite pleasant. Sexuality and sexual expression is a, the last bastion in lots of ways. People with disability want connection and intimacy and touch. When I first got to know Rachel, the light behind each other's eyes blew each other's cover. We clicked pretty quickly. We set up Touching Base in early 2000 to bring two marginalised groups together to fight for each other's rights and to have a really clear, strong, powerful voice. Good afternoon, people with disability. Denise speaking. Um, I was told that you might be able to uh, help me with uh, uh, accessing a sex worker. For some clients, it will be their first sexual experience, so seeing a sex worker is a way for them to learn about sex and what sex is and learn about their own bodies and what, what's possible. For other people, it can be just to meet the intimacy. What's the gender of the sex worker that you want to see? Uh, a female, please. Because I find that people don't want to talk to me about sex. They just want to know where they can get it. <laughs> An outreach worker said, John, do you think you might be interested? I said, is the Pope a cat, please? I think a lot of us sex workers do see clients with disability. People just turn up, just like any other client, really word of mouth sets in and then obviously the carers and support staff and, and the guys themselves talk amongst themselves so I've had referrals from clients to each other so about 50% of my client base now I, I reckon are people with disability. About nine years ago I'd reached the point with my MS where I'd lost the use of my legs, I'd lost the use of my arms I got a chin control to operate my motorised wheelchair. I'm a great planner, probably from my engineering background. And I would sit some days on the veranda at our place, staring into space, just thinking about ways of ending it all. I thought I've got 
going to pull my way out. I'm going to get out of this. I lead a very active life. Hello, John. How was your weekend? I haven't got much movement, if any, below the knee. But there's plenty of life to be lived from the neck up. It's just gorgeous. It looks like the summer going to come back again. John is one of the, my uh, regular customer. And, and, and friend, darling. Oh, actually, yes. He's a good friend, yeah. too. <laughs> I think I've been seeing John over a year now. Well over a year. <laughs> I really like seeing clients with disability. They can be quite diverse. Diverse in their personality, in their mobility. Diverse in the services they want. Very diverse. I'm a culture vulture. I get out to as many things as I can. Art, film, my own radio program. Mike, you've certainly developed some very visual and innovative techniques such as the incredible rapid fire finger flutter. <laughs> <laughs> you never really think of yourself as particularly sexy. Although I've got a beautiful red and orange wheelchair, it's not quite enough to make it on the level of being sexy. It helps you to soothe your senses. Soothe your body, soothe your senses. Over all the years of the MS, the hardest thing to come to terms with is the loss of independence. And by necessity, care is touching you. They're doing it as part of something which is practicality. Sure, there are occasionally affectionate pats on the back. They're all really beautiful. I like the fact that my job always entails pleasure, making someone feel better about themselves, that they are the center of someone's attention and they deserve to smile. One, two, two three. three. Up, up, yep. The zipper up. And then. It's the only time during the day where I'm totally relieved of all pressure. So I'm free as a bird. base has been able to start training the first in the world I believe for sex workers. We're developing this new process of educating ourselves about how to work with clients with disability and there's not many external resources that you can lean on for that. We've kind of had to lean on each other. Holding, putting your thumbs through there and actually helping people when they're walking to assist them. They feel very secure, it's very sexy, and it means that if they do happen to fall down, it means that we can go into those assisted falls that Ramira showed us before. If people just use their eyes, so this is yes and this is no. Um, would you like me to take off your pants? This is yes and this is no. Yes, okay. Right. We're not used to asking yes or no questions. As sex mm. workers, we're used to trying to induce a conversation with someone, which usually mm. means asking an open question. I actually hold the list that you will all aspire to be on. People ask me what I do quite often for a living, and I go, I pimp for people. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> the chorus pimp, though, because she doesn't get paid. <laughs> when I do the education part of Touching Base, I talk about my experience. Oh, my first sexual experience was with a sex worker and their jaw sort of drops and goes, but you're a girl, that was hard to organise over here. And I'm going, yeah, it was, but it was worth it in the end because it was much better than, you know, a young man who didn't know what he was doing, really. I have cerebral palsy, I was born with it. There are days when I can't button up my own shirt. My legs will be stubborn on some occasions, like they'll bend up or they won't bend up. 
So it's about manoeuvre and it's about satisfaction for me, actually, to be honest. I've been seeing someone, actually, uh, which has been really lovely. He lives interstate. It's actually really good that we get to speak on the phone so we don't get distracted by being so kind of hands-on. I'm always in control at work, whereas in a relationship in your private life, then, you know, it's two people. You have the pulling and pu pushing, so you can be vulnerable. My boundaries are different and negotiating a whole different range of things and meeting each other's friends. I mean, that's the thing. I'm not just a sex worker, I'm actually someone who's quite out. There's two schools of thought with you, mates. There's either, yeah, <laughs> good on you, mate, <laughs> or, or, um, or that sort of lack of understanding, like, oh, you know, I couldn't do it. I'll be honest, the only time that I ever have any kind of sort of... Uh, feeling about it is if she's got like an extended long booking okay that's the only time like an hour two hours something like that is usually fine but but I, I do understand why, why it happens and and there are guys out there who don't have that opportunity and she's great to be with so it doesn't but that doesn't happen that often and Although she probably wished it did, because <laughs> you make a bit more money. <laughs> well, I'll call you if I need to pick you up. As a partner of a sex worker, it takes a very strong, independent, and fantastic person. And you know, I'm, I can't compromise. So if someone if someone can't support me through my occupational choices and respect me as an equal, then I don't want to be with them. Hmm. Tonight's really important. Yeah. Tonight's important because I haven't seen Rachel for a while since the last year. A lot of my clients with different disabilities, they have to save for three months to see me. So I know that every moment that I'm with them is really precious. Well, tonight uh, I have actually been in the hotel with a, a client for an hour. That was lovely. And where am I going? I'm going to the dark side. <laughs> I'm going over the Harbour Bridge to the North Shore. John, long time no see. How are you going? I'm more gorgeous than last time. Oh, thank you. You know how to get I to me. You're getting, <laughs> you're getting more gorgeous as the months roll on. Ah, oh, that's because it's been so many months. <laughs> and I get older. Oh, I don't know. I think we're aging gracefully I get, together. <laughs> I get older and boy dumb. <laughs> don't Aaron pop too camera. soon. <laughs> no, I don't want to pop too soon. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's so nice. It's been a while since I've been balancing on your bed. <laughs> I've got a very vivid image. Ah, yeah. So I think you're going to surprise me. No, no. What am I going to do with you tonight? Mmm, <laughs> it's been well, so long. I've been looking forward to this mm. night. So, so I went shopping. There's been lots of really positive things that have been going on. Certain mobility and movement he thought he had lost forever. 
through MS has he's regained function. It's absolutely astounding, neurologist I see, because it's virtually unheard of that that sexual function returns. It's so beautiful. Thanks, love, very much. I had the best night on Tuesday. It was just a tremendous night of sex. Before on and I, I think I performed better than a 22 year old. Oh, mate, good to hear. The equipment all performed very well and. Making me blush. So it's an incredible return from the wilderness. A little bit of spring in your step. The afterglow has made me feel like a real bloke again. Right, I'll tell you, one good orgasm is better than you know, three sessions with an OT sometimes. Yeah, my mum loves Rachel. My, my mum thinks she's fantastic. She asked me all the questions. My mum said to me the other day, and she'll kill me for even mentioning this, she, uh, she said, you know, Matt, can you ask Rachel a question for me? And I said, what's that, Mum? I want to know about um, golden showers. Is that what they call them, golden showers? I said, yes, Mum. Well, I don't think this is an appropriate discussion, Mum. <laughs> she goes, no, I just want to know, how does she do it on command? How, how does that happen? I'm like, oh my God, mum, I've got no idea. I don't even ask her those questions, but I'll, I'll find out. How about that? Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> so she's, but she loves Rachel. She's fascinated by the whole thing. And of course, she's, she sits there and, and says, you know, if I had my time again. When I started, when I was 20, I just thought, this would be great for a few years. But then I soon discovered that there's people that work into their 50s and into their 60s and 70s. It opened up my eyes that I didn't have to have a use by date. Have a little read. And I got more and more involved in the rights of sex workers around the world. No bad horse, just bad laws. No bad horse, just bad laws. No bad horse, just bad laws. If sex industry businesses are going to be treated the same as any other business, then the laws should treat them the same as well. Yay! We keep getting all these people that talk about the sex industry being really bad for us and that we're all victims to try to cut the sex industry down. They should be advocating for our rights, not discriminating against us. A lot of people out there who have no right to speak about sex workers the way they do. And somehow because they're doctor such and such and doctor this or they're associated with certain universities, they have a more powerful voice. I mean, perhaps that's a really interesting bit of research and in looking into what kind of background some of these people who hold such negative views towards the sex industry have. I mean, look at this, the spinster and her enemies and anti-climax of feminist perspective on the sexual revolution. <laughs> I don't think she's ever think... had a climax. <laughs> Rachel and I are studying to do a master's by research at the University of Sydney. Our research is around sex workers in New South Wales providing services to clients with a disability. We will be experts in the field, both in Australia and globally. Hey, he told me I've got an HD. And then I said, fantastic, can you tell me what Sauls is <laughs> so I can tell him? I'm getting ready to go to Europe to present at the World Association of Sexology Conference. Out of all the abstracts I put in, they didn't even want to know about my university research. They wanted to know about touching base. Always got to have one good working dress. Well, people think you have to wear Louis Vuitton and it's hilarious. A good working dress is one that doesn't have too many buckles, zips or catches. One that you can actually just slide off in a sexy way. I travel because I want to see the country. I travel because I want to see friends. I travel because I want to work there. And so sometimes you mix it up. My stopovers in London and 
I couldn't resist the opportunity to visit the Baxter family. They've been in the media recently because the mum supports her son losing his virginity to a sex worker. Hello. I've got my sex worker hat off and I'm here to talk to them about touching base and also what their options are here in the UK. Lucy is an adoptive mother of not only Otto Baxter but three other boys who have Down syndrome. That was a, the jackpot, wasn't it? Coming up with you because you're so beautiful, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, you are. It's me and my tuxedo. Mm -hmm. nice. That's me there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, what are you doing there, are they? Yeah. <laughs> I had this belief that it was how they were treated, mm. not the fact that they had Down syndrome. Mm. And so I've tried to model their lives on like just the life of mm. the boy next door. Good guy. All my children, you know, are fantastic, I think. Rosso really wants a girlfriend. He wants the whole romantic package, really. Yes, you have good muscles. Do you go to the gym? Yeah, I always do. Really? She I would like him to lose his virginity yeah. because then it's over and done with. Oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> it's going to be great fun. So I'm come down on. Shut the windows, shut the curtains. And have some romantic, sexy music. You know, the sort of anguish and, and damage that can be done to Otto particularly if he sees everybody else, you know, having relationships, having sex, and he misses out. It quite feels quite bad, actually. Quite terrible. Like, like a big dagger. We're not saying it's the only option, but they do get you know, safer sex education, they get a warm environment, and you know, we can build it up. Some people come in, they go, right, I want to lose my virginity now. Yes. You'll be like, great, please tell me at the beginning, because sometimes you get clients able bodied or not, um, where they tell you at the end, you think, oh my God. Why didn't you tell me at the start, yes. you know, and then we could have made an extra yes. special for you. Yes. So oh, lovely. Yeah. It's completely legal for a sex worker to come here. Is You're it really? Yes, know. it is. You can order in like a pizza. Yes. <laughs> So there's some, there's some, some media. Come to the party shop. <laughs> That's right. Like a uh, big dress. Yes. And a bit of a tattoo. Uh-huh. And like a bit of long legs. Uh-huh. And lots of hand jobs. So basically we're an average guy. Yes. <laughs> Just yeah. like around the population. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And was that your first kiss or something? It is. Not, not, not on my bed. So the terminology within the sex industry is different mm. in... Australia, they might say, do you Jane or do you do Greek? So there's all these different terminology. It's like full service. It's, it's like intercourse, basic not, vaginal intercourse. Well, there is a term actually, Spanish is between the breasts. So if you're saying that you really like girls with big breasts, there's something that, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, maybe we shouldn't talk about this in front of your mum, but, <laughs> but where, where guys put their penis between the, guy, the girl's breasts and, and if they're together, then you rub them up. It's like a, a stimulating. Fantastic. So it's, it's something for you to think about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's called Spanish. So it's um. It. So there's all the frequently asked questions. Do you do Egyptian? There's no Egyptian. I'm sure you may create it. Yeah. Egypt. <laughs> Egypt sex. Oh look. Oh hello, cheeky cheeky. That's good for me. <laughs> Pretty expensive to come fly to Sydney for a route. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe you'd like to look around in England I would, first. Actually, yeah. <laughs> so London. London. Hot lesbians. Mm. It sounds like a very good incentive for you to go to work if you would have had to pay a sex worker for it. That'd be nice. But you'd have to go to work to pay for your sessions. Mm. Would it be worth going to work to pay for your sessions? <laughs> Fit <so>. mm. <laughs> I'm obsessed with learning and I really like meeting other sex workers and sex worker organisations from around the world. Oh, that's fantastic. 
Pia is one of my dearest friends. She lives in and works in Sweden. Even though we're on opposite sides of the world, we're always working for the same aims. I have two favorite groups of clients. It's really lonely people and people with disabilities. And they have, these two groups overlap a lot. I tend to form a very, very strong bond because I can't just, you know, come and go on autopilot. These are people that very often has for a long time never been touched or never got to touch someone in, in, a, in something that is sexual or sensual. And I don't want to like, f you know, fake it with them. I want them to get, you know, this it needs to be real. I need to be there. There are no clients that makes me feel so happy afterwards because I, then I really feel that, wow, I'm good at my job. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Nice to see you in the next. She's a fantastic activist and has been working now for many years to try to change the laws in Sweden around sex work, known as the Swedish model. The Swedish model is based on the assumption that there is no such thing as sex work out of free will. So the idea is that each purchase of a sexual service is violence against women, so they criminalise the client. It means we can't put out ads because then the newspapers can be charged of pimping, we can't rent apartment because then the landlord can be charged of pimping. We can't work together because then we will be charged of pimping each other. So it just isolates us very much. Hi, hi, you rated. A lot of girls are pushing their boundaries. We all have rules on how to work and things we will do and things we won't do. And now they will have to start crossing that line. And that line is what keeps us healthy and safe. If we say that we actually enjoy our work and that we're, that we're, that we're just the happy hooker, that we've actually got a false consciousness and mm. we're so damaged we don't sorry, actually realise that we are damaged. <laughs> That's pretty awful. A few months ago was that we had the Stockholm Syndrome. Oh, oh no I never heard that. So, yeah. so the clients are the kidnappers and then you, oh. yeah, and then you start to, to like it because... We start to like our clients. <laughs> and, 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 like and, 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 and again, you know, in their world it's like, okay, disabled or not, a person is, is you know, paying for a service from a sex worker mm. for one hour. They think that it's one hour of penetration. Mm. Mm. And, yes, and I, I I've never done one hour of penetration with a client. I would die if I had to do that. I've met thousands and thousands and thousands of sex workers around the world. I've been involved in the sex industry for over 17 years now. There's nothing unique about me. There's heaps of blondes, you know, mid 30 year olds who are in the sex industry. The only difference is that I'm willing to put it to camera because for a lot of people, the discrimination and stigma is too great. I just wish I could be a whore sometimes because, you know, I'd, I'd just love to have a year where you could just work and not deal with all this, but then you can't because there's only so many people doing it, so... Yeah, no, and, and also it's like, you know, I've been, I've been trying to give my, myself time off. But you know, when you're not opening that mailbox, you're missing out on good stuff. Yeah. And you know when we start on good stuff? <laughs> yeah. The people attending this conference are generally medical practitioners, therapists and academics. Hi. How are you? I may be the only sex worker out and proud who is actually presenting here. So, I don't even know where that, that will be. Oh look, in deviant behaviour, exotic dancing. Oh my God. They compared vaginal swabs of sex workers compared to the normal population. It's perpetuating that sex workers are vectors of disease. We're not seen as humans, we're seen as vaginal swabs. Hi, Mom. Imagine every new person you meet that, you know, you basically have to say, I'm, I'm worth knowing. Even though I'm a sex worker, you know, I'm worth knowing. Please accept me. Every time you meet someone, you will have to make a decision. Am I going to tell her or him or not? 
I'm a sex worker from Australia. No, I'm a sex worker. Are you a doctor? Or no, not yet. Yeah, no, I am masters in the sexual health. I am a sex worker, but also do a lot of lobbying and activism. So, um, but maybe I should ask this. <laughs> so how much? How much? <laughs> how much do you normally charge? <laughs> this is an organisation I yeah. have set up called Touching Base. It is getting worse in Sweden and it is actually worse for us sex workers. People keep saying, oh, we're just criminalising the clients. We, you know, I really like my clients. The, it's, the clients have been demonised around the world. And I also work very closely with clients with disability. And it is a hidden, hidden sector of the client population that no one really discusses. You were at... Uh, I'll, put the, I'll put the different, yes. different organisations yes. I'm a part of. Yes. Who's who? Yes. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Rachel, bring sort of a love for humanity and an ability to articulate life experiences with learning. And that is so unique to many others who come from a purely clinical, academic background. Uh, my boyfriend lives in Brisbane, so if you have any yeah. clients that you'd, okay, um, you'd like yeah, to okay, refer yeah. to me... <laughs> because of the discrimination and the stigma, no client ever wants to put his face to the name. But it's interesting because a lot of my clients with disability are willing and happy to speak out because they already face a lot of discrimination. You reckon an inch is enough? Then I'm going to cut it off and once I cut it off, your history. In the beginning, when Mark was only very small, we didn't know what was wrong. It was just so lovely to think that everything was okay with his mind and he was really able to understand and, and from then on those eyes, he has the most beautiful eyes and they just used to tell you everything. You're happy with that? Mm. Well, I'm going to lock it up because that's what you're getting. <laughs> Mark and his father get on very well. Mark is quite funny really. He's got quite a, a wit. And I've got a, a builder's hat, cut the top off. I made this up out of brake pipe out of a car. Mm -hmm. No, it's ready yet for a drink. Mm -hmm. We're ready. We've been waiting for half an hour. OK, there's a few goodies there. Put my table over Ready, Mark? Oh, I can't give it to you with that on. Yeah. OK. His mum, Elaine, needs to be cloned, I've told her, because she's a woman who views her son as an adult and as a person who has full needs. It's hard because with your other kids you don't have anything to do with their sex lives or whatever, but Mark needed that little bit of help. Case. Mum was a bit unsure to begin with, but she didn't try to stop me or anything like that. But the conversation wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. When we went to the first brothel, uh, it was supposed to be wheelchair accessible but really it wasn't and uh, I can remember having to carry Mark up these stairs and made it very difficult but uh, and then I just broke down and cried the whole time I was there. Well that was good. As the years have passed I used to enjoy just waiting around for Mark and meeting the girls. Um, they're just it's just been part of life. People do not understand the difference that sex makes. Part of having cerebral palsy is spasticity in muscle spasms. I need sex all the time to make my muscles relax. And I like sex. If he gets something in his mind that he would like to do, and there are some rules and regulations that may not allow him to do things, he does push everyone's button to try and push for himself and for the rights of the others that can't do it for themselves. When he left school, he was given a, a spoon by a speech therapist and on it has got, Mark keeps stirring and I can assure you that's what he's done over the years. Mm. 
Do you know how you you were licking me before? And I was saying that that's just inappropriate because it's like a dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known that was coming. Rachel and I have Careful. been going out now for about 16 months, I guess. I've just reached past my personal best in terms of having a long-term boyfriend. Yay, me. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Uh-huh. So you had to, of course, be in the wrong state. <laughs> if I didn't have a son, it's hardly likely that I'd move to Sydney. Yeah. But because but I do him. have a son and he's only two and a half, mm-hmm. it's just it's something yeah. that I just I can't do. Brothels will be closed or suspended what? from trading under tough new laws set to be introduced in the state parliament mm-hmm. this week. What new law is that? Well, the move comes as brothel owners thumb their noses. <laughs> Thumbs their nose. <laughs> For Matt and myself to move in together in Queensland somewhere is a lot more complex than just merging two households together. How I operate in New South Wales, where it's decriminalised, is not allowed. In fact, it is illegal in Queensland. A single sex worker must not be found on premises with any other person. Police can legally harass you into agreeing to do a double booking, then charge you. Amazing. It's quite amazing. The discrimination never ends. And it makes me feel like a second class citizen in silence. I'd like to continue on to a PhD. I want to be Dr. Rachel Watson, <laughs> for many reasons. I suppose it's like beating them at their own game. I will be a sex worker, I will be an out and proud sex worker, and I will be Dr. Rachel Watson, sex worker. Rachel and I'm sure there'll be a few clients that will want to see me in my gown. <laughs> I have to charge extra. <laughs> I have a schoolgirl's uniform. Every now and then that gets pulled out. <laughs> I can have undergraduate and postgraduate. Rachel. I always said that when I graduated from Sydney Uni, I had to wear fishnets, and so here I am today. <laughs> <laughs> My little babies. <laughs> My mum does know I'm a sex worker. Shall I rip it apart now? Oh, no, you don't want to rip it apart. Well, well, you would buy me a vibrator. Well, no, it's not. No. <laughs> something very practical. Well, said, okay. She's really supportive, but she's more isolated than me, and I feel really bad for her. I can deal with the discrimination. I don't like it. But I know how to deal with it and cope with it, and I have many friends who can support me. This one's for Saul. <laughs> Mum is really alone, and a lot of parents are alone, and a lot of partners are alone. Of course, she's worried about what I'm doing, and she can't be really chuffed or brag about me to her, her friends. Here we go, Mum. It's $20, okay? Have a lovely day. flowers. Oh, you went up to the florist this morning. Mark bought me flowers today and I asked him why and <laughs> he said he couldn't work out. I couldn't work out because it's not my birthday or whether what it was, but then we worked it out and he spelled it out. He's really buttering me up so that I'll give him more money for, my, for his birthday. <laughs> it has been my dream to have a woman stay in my bed overnight. It's something that other people get to enjoy and share. Rachel's coming over today so that I can show her the ropes. Hello. Long time no see. I'm great. (laughs) Nice to see you. It's much cooler in here. Hello. How are you? Generally, as a sex worker, you never see people's parents. 
Doing very well for your first day. Doing some more. So on your birthday, what you'll be getting is banana. Banana. <laughs> yes. Banana <family. laughs> Clients understand that Rachel is providing them a service. Do you want a practice run? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Such faith. <laughs> Rachel yeah. is not shocked by anything because you're out like that. She you sees them across. as people, but she sees them as people that want to explore themselves to the fullest. Is that all right? Okay, yeah, we can. Do I'd that. like to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Have to charge you extra. <laughs> I've told Rachel she has to give me lots of notice of her retirement if it ever eventuates because there would be clients that would be absolutely devastated. No, I can't imagine giving up my clients. I enjoy what I do. As I've said, it's, you know, it's fun, it's interesting. It's um, a real honour to be able to be a part of their lives and to bring them some joy. So have you decided what you're going to wear? No? Huh? Okay. Smooth enough? Huh? All right. Now I'm going to put up with Donna to say happy birthday to you, okay? Have a great day. All right? Yes. Uh, don't do the things that I'd probably do. <laughs> Oh, you'd love, you'd love what he's doing today, Uncle John. What's he doing today? Oh, well, we'll tell you after, eh? Hey? What is it? One. More. Will I check it? Sometimes you think, oh, it's a lot of money, but then Mark doesn't do anything else. And he doesn't have fast cars, and these are things that we just take for granted as normal people. It's just so nice for Mark to be able to experience all this. <laughs> hey! <laughs> and birthday to you! That they do. Hello. Mm -hmm. hey, yeah. oh. I dearly would love him to have someone, someone to be there for him. Lead me to the pub. <laughs> Particularly now that um, we are getting older, and uh, you know he needs to have. Everybody needs to have that certain somebody just to yeah. hold hands with. So you let my hair. I just want to look at my ass, don't you? <laughs> I do not have a girlfriend, so I cannot share my feelings with just one person. <laughs> Thank you. Rachel makes me feel like I have a girlfriend, but I know she is a sex worker. Good day. I'm Hello. here. Hello. You're late. Oh, what no, have you been doing? I'm always late. Yeah. Well, we've oh, got I'm a here. lot of work here to do. Did you get these? All oh, won't be able to carry it. Make it as hard as you can. Yeah, oh, okay. What, this we year? always share a laugh. Oh, so With all my clients, you speak about what's going on in your immediate life or things that you're planning for in the future, um, people's fears or expectations. <laughs> I should be taking you out. It seems a bit backwards, doesn't it? <laughs> <I know. laughs> this will be the first time you've made a bed stroke. Got around the wrong way. You're the woman, not me. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Eight out of ten. <laughs> Do I get a gold star? I'm always blessed with that. They trust me a lot. So I may be standing on someone's bed or holding onto the ceiling or, you know, if, if someone has a, a limited mobility, then how are they ever, ever going to be able to see up someone's dress? 
if that's a fantasy, well, that's a pretty harmless fantasy, but it's one I want to give someone if that's what they like. So, you know, they trust me to be able to stand above them. Are you okay there? Yes? You want, you want juice? You're not choking? Okay. <laughs> My grace is for you. <laughs> Geez, I might, I might sleep here tonight instead. Some chockies, some petals. I don't know. I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> the queen wouldn't even get this, I don't think. I'd be a bit worried if she'd done that for me. Are these the fair dinkum ones? Yes, just of course they're the plastic? fair. They're fair dinkum ones. Oh. They're rose petals. Yeah, they are too. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Hope you're learning from this bag. Hello, how are you? Hi, good, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go home and probably blubber. <laughs> no, I'll go home and, and think how lucky he is. I'm so happy for him. Ah, nice. Oh, how lovely. Uh, uh, <laughs> Beautiful. Glad your mum's done well. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mark. <laughs> nice. Uh, Happy birthday uh, to you. Uh, <laughs> Happy birthday uh, to you. <laughs> hmm, this one. And... Or the book that, yeah, my research is going, kind of. I have to banish myself from <laughs> Sydney, I think. So, and just kind of focus and, you know, that. <laughs> but yeah, I'll get back to you. Your book will be done before my research <laughs> at this rate, so. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. When you're in the middle of a, a sexual act with someone, you're hardly going to be bringing a communication board out. So it is about forming that bond and, and understanding and trying to be able to read what they want. Just one, two. Being able to preempt what someone will like and having that Thank intuitive you. nature of knowing when to stop or when to change positions or that someone may like something. So you do, over time, get to know people's nuances with their body and how they behave and their sounds and their movements. Rachel doesn't just help me physically, but will also spend time talking. Often we will talk when we are in bed, using letters, a piece of paper, and my eyes. I think my body is beautiful, and we'll make a movie and show people.
Beautiful. I have my current partner, three ex-boyfriends, four current clients, and my mother all at today's event. Yeah, good. <laughs> hey. Matt, David. David oh, used to be oh, part of the Touching Base Committee at Vice President. Oh, it's begun. I'd love to see you. Here's a moment oh, for you. <laughs> Matt, this is Mark. Mark, Matt, hi, that's my hi, partner. Hi. And this is Mark's mother, Elaine. You can meet my mother in a minute too. <laughs> this, this is uh, my mum and this is Elaine, his mum. Hello, how are you? Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you very much. Oh, follow the boot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> One of the greatest things I've found with um, Touching Base is that Everything that we're working towards is about making people feel better about themselves. Jimmy, here you go. Give me another. <laughs> hello, hello. Wow. What Rachel's been able to do for me in my life is to help me take control of the MS, being a companion on a sexual journey of basic human expression. <laughs> All the achievements and the goals are uplifting and we actually have been able to create positive change in the last decade. I think this is a particularly interesting program because not only does it bring a lot of pleasure to a lot of people, but it actually undermines almost all of the stereotypes that we get in both of the areas of disability and sex work. And as a feminist, I often get myself into trouble with other feminists who don't like sex workers. And I'm very clear about the fact that I do, and I think they do an excellent job in the community, and I think we have to support them. I hope Fantastic. I make it straight. And my wildest dream would be to have Touching Base in every state. So there'd be Touching Base Inc. Australia. Thank you, God, for that. And then from there, well, we've got 150-something countries to go to. <laughs>